Starship's recovery systems come alive. Starlink becomes SpaceX's first of many missions for 2022. Another Falcon launch is booked for next week, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. We're back with our second episode of the new year. Our weekly Tuesday episodes are now available to the public, so if you missed our first one, I'll link it at the end of this video. Since Tuesday's SODE was published, SpaceX took another major step towards Starship Super Heavy Recovery by testing the tower's chopsticks all night on Tuesday and Wednesday, more so than what they did on Sunday, by moving the arms up and down the structure repeatedly and also spreading them apart, bringing them together, abduction, adduction, rinse, repeat. This gigantic hugging machine will be used in part to stack Starship and its booster on the pad prior to launch and then eventually catch both stages during landing. Elon decided to do things this way during last year's test flights when he realized both stages weigh too much on planet Earth for landing legs to be useful. However, Moon and Mars Starship variants will have them. Nothing will be caught for the first orbital flight though. Booster 4 will splash down in the Gulf and Starship 20 will splash down off the coast of Hawaii. If everything goes well, that is. Again, SpaceX, and all of us, are waiting on the FAA to release their final environmental assessment of the Boca Chica area so this mission can happen. The agency previously said they'd have it completed on December 31st, but over the holidays delayed it to the end of February. The bureaucrats could decide to either greenlight Starship Super Heavy with the needed permission for launch, or require an entirely new EIS to be completed, which will delay the program many, many months. In the meantime, SpaceX continues to prepare for the orbital launch regardless. Static firing Starship for a fourth time last week and putting its booster through some cryo tests before it eventually follows suit with its 29 Raptor engines. The next booster will have four additional Raptors and Starship will be gifted three more as well, so its tanks will need to be stretched. Elon recently twatted that the second generation Raptors, currently in development, are being put through the ringer and crushing it by routinely operating over 300 bar. While these new engines won't be needed for orbital flights, they are critical for Mars missions. Road closures in Boca are in place for today and the second half of next week, and SpaceX crew members have begun working on the third level of the wide bay, which upon completion will allow two additional ships to be stacked at the same time. In other news, yesterday a flock of 49 Starlink satellites were launched from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, Florida. And although the broadcast ended prior to their release, Elon did follow up that they were set free without incident. The booster, which previously carried Inspiration4 to space, landed successfully for a fourth time on the drone ship A Shortfall of Gravitas. As more satellites go up, the more Starlink internet service expands and improves. SpaceX webcast host Jesse Anderson said that to date there are 145,000 users in 25 countries. However, SpaceX is refunding pre-order deposits to their customers in India since SpaceX has not yet been granted a license to operate by the Indian government. To quote the company in an email to said customers, unfortunately, the timeline for receiving licenses to operate is currently unknown, and there are several issues that must be resolved with the licensing framework to allow us to operate Starlink in India. The next Falcon launch is currently slated for Thursday next week at 10.25 a.m. Eastern. It's another rideshare mission to sun-synchronous orbit. A few weeks ago, a Sherpa tug built by Andrew Space, used to deploy CubeSats, sprung a leak in his propulsion system and had to be sidelined for this mission. I'll be streaming this one live exclusively on Rumble, so if you haven't yet, you can use the link below to subscribe on that platform, for free. And if you would like email notifications for all upcoming launches, join the Space Eccentric community on Locals, also for free. SpaceX is expecting 2022 to be their busiest year yet, so don't be left behind in the madness. Now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. On December 14th, NASA announced that their Parker Solar Probe became the first spacecraft ever to enter the solar atmosphere. The probe was launched on a Delta Heavy back in August of 2018 and spent the last three years orbiting the sun, flying closer to our star with each pass. During its eighth flyby on April 28th, the spacecraft managed to get inside the sun's corona and found a pseudo-streamer 15 solar radii from the surface. Once inside, it found that the magnetic fields were strong enough to dominate the movement of particles. NASA said it was like flying into the eye of a storm. The spacecraft can only spend a few hours in the corona due to the intense conditions, but it will return for another visit this month, and is expected to eventually creep as close as 8.86 solar radii, or 3.83 million miles, 6.16 million clicks, from the sun's visible surface, the photosphere. 
Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for checking in. My sincerest appreciation goes out to our supporters whose membership allows these videos to be viewed by everyone. If you would also like to back the show, get more access to content, participate in this grand adventure to the stars, check out the link to our locals community below. Have a nominal weekend and until next time, Godspeed.